Good evening, everybody. Um, hopefully, this won't be a long video. I just want to um, discuss what I had mentioned on uh, an earlier Facebook uh, post that I made regarding um, pastor anniversary, pastor celebrations, and and what is the biblical support behind it. Now, <clears throat> on the Lord's Day in particular, on the Lord's Day in particular. Um, I, I believe that uh, the Bible says there's a time and place for everything. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But I do believe that when we gather for the Lord's Day, that is supposed to be for the Lord's Day. <clears throat> to, to worship the Lord. Not to recognize or to quote unquote honor or celebrate or have a week uh, or month long quote unquote anniversary slash celebration when we're supposed to be gathering for the Lord and worshiping on the Lord's Day. What's going on, Brother Will? So I want to read a few verses of scripture. And, you know, we can have a conversation about this. And, uh, you know, I guess I swung at the hornet's nest or touched the sacred uh, uh, calf again. Uh, but I'm, I'm here to to challenge the body of Christ and also, you know, myself. Um, I believe that if we're not careful, uh, we will always make excuses for things that we idolize and we sometimes don't even know uh that we that we idolize or um you know find ourselves uh adulating people uh in this in this sense and in this context so <clears throat> let me say this at, on, on the outset as a pastor myself uh i, I don't seek uh when i was preaching and, and, and pastoring my own church at the time i didn't seek to have a a pastor's anniversary. I did not seek to have a Sunday set aside uh, for uh, our local fellowship to mm -hmm. to quote unquote show their appreciation or to thank me for the years of, of, of ministry that I did. In fact, uh, that's what I'm supposed to do. You know, and I want to set a few examples here, and hopefully you guys will hear the the spirit behind what I'm saying here on tonight. And please share this video. Um, as well. I believe this is a topic that we need to address as Christians in the body of Christ and to, and to challenge and, and to, you know, check our own hearts um, in, in this matter. But we have pastor anniversary. We have pastor celebration. We have first lady celebration. We have all these different celebrations and, and things on the Lord's Day when we're supposed to gather to worship mm -hmm. God. We're, we're supposed to we're supposed to come together as a local body to do the following things. Now, I, I want to read some text and, and you show me in scripture, where is the biblical support for pastor anniversaries, pastoral celebration? I don't care how you call it, um, because if, if you if you carry it to its logical conclusion, we can have a day for everything on the Lord's Day. We can have Parents Day. We already got people, you know, with Mother's Day and, and Father's Day. And, and I'm saying, if that's the case, then why don't we just set aside a day to basically, you know, honor parents, honor mothers and fathers. I'm talking about give them money. You know, let's have it. If we're going to do it for pastors, then let's let's do it for the parents who birthed these pastors. See, we don't want to talk about that. I'm saying when we when we press these things and push it and press it to its logical conclusion, we open up a door to all kinds of quote unquote celebrations and appreciations. This is not to say we are not to appreciate those who labor in the word and doctrine. If you've been following me, if you've been seeing what I post and what I preach and what I talk about, you know that we are to appreciate those who labor in the word and doctrine. But why does it have to be on the Lord's Day? That's my point. And, and, and not only on the Lord's Day, why does it have to be for an entire week or weeks? You know, I was watching uh, earlier this morning. I saw Terry Anderson. If you know who Terry Anderson is here in Houston, he's celebrating his 40th uh, year of, of pastor ministry or whatever like that. And, and, he, and they're making a big hoopla over that. Ralph West, same thing. Uh, 30 years. And... They're celebrating his, you know, the church is celebrating his uh, anniversary and the church's anniversary and they're having a, a month long celebration. And I'm, I'm saying, so then why don't we do this for parents? In, you know, in May, let's have a month long Mother's Day celebration and pay these mothers money. Give them money. 
Let's do it for Father's Day. God knows fathers are being neglected and being disregarded and being ignored. Uh, let's do it for them as well, too. Let's do it for Grandparents Day. Let's do it for Children's Day. Let's do it for your pet day. Let's just, let's just, let's just have a day every day. That we, anything we can think of, let's make a day for it. And let's do it on the Lord's Day. Oh, no, nah, brother, because, you know, if, if, if that's the case, then that's, that's going to take away. Take away from what? Take away from the word. Take away from the glory of God being seen. Exactly. Acts chapter two, verse 40, <clears throat> uh, verse 42. And again, I just want to I'm just want to read these texts and I'm going to get out of your hair. No pun intended. <laughs> but I want to read these texts. Get out of your hair. Get out of your way and challenge you. Challenge you for those who support uh uh, celebrated pastors and verses. And again, I'm not here to attack, but I'm saying, what's the purpose of doing it on the Lord's day? It, what's the, what's the purpose of having these things done when we're to gather as a people to do the following things in Acts chapter two, verse 42, and they, that is the church. And they were continually devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. You see the elements, you see these, these components that, <clears throat> that Luke records in the book of Acts. He said, when the church gathered together, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. That would be preaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So we have preaching, partnership, or fellowship, prayer, breaking of bread. We have all these components. I'm saying, this is what the church is supposed to be doing. You don't see the apostles having an apostles' anniversary. You don't see the, the, the apostles, you don't see Peter, you don't see James, you don't see Paul, you don't see any of these apostles, you know, looking for the church to celebrate them. No, I don't oppose honoring pastors. And, and, I'm, and, and so let me just read these texts. Let me just read these texts. What I oppose is the adulation, is the, is the fanfare of these things. When we gather together, we, we're, we're making the pastor the focus instead of instead of the one who enlisted the pastor into their local church. Um, so Acts chapter 2, verse 42, just read that. Then in Acts chapter 20, verse, uh, verse 33 and 34, this is Paul talking to the uh, Ephesian elders in Ephesus, and he says, Verse 33, I have coveted no one's silver or gold or clothes. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my own needs and to the men who were with me. So notice what Paul says. He said, listen, I, I never, I didn't come after your money. I didn't, I didn't go after being lauded and celebrated and quote unquote appreciated. I didn't, I didn't, you know, uh, want to have my own day or anything like that. And, and in fact, remember, uh, there was a passage in scripture uh, and, and, and I'll just read this. This is, this is something I just thought about in Acts chapter 14. Okay. In Acts chapter 14, verse eight, it says in Elisha, at Elisha, there was sitting a certain man without strength in his feet, lame from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man was listening to Paul as he spoke. And when he had fixed his gaze upon him and had seen that he had the faith to be made well, said with a loud voice, stand up right on your feet. And he leaped up and began to walk. And when the multitude saw that when what Paul had done, they raised their voice saying in the Lyconian language, the gods have come, <clears throat> have become like men and have come down to us. And they began calling Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. Now, I know some of y'all said, well, we're not doing all that. We're not doing all that. Look at the spirit behind what these people were doing. And these people are pagans. OK, so they're they're they they're, they should they should do, do this by nature this, because they're pagans. They don't know they're living in true God. But they wanted to show their appreciation be, be, be because of what Paul and, and, and Barnabas did, but primarily Paul. But notice. Verse 14 says, but when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their robes and rushed out into the crowds, crying out and saying, men, why are you doing these things? We are also men of the same nature as you and preach 
the gospel to you in order that you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the sea, heaven, and, and, and see, made the heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. And in the generations he had, uh, in the generations gone by, he permitted all the nations to go their own ways, and yet did not leave himself without witness. And that he did good and gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. And even saying these things, they with difficulty to restrain the crowds from offering sacrifice. From offering sacrifice to them. They, they didn't want it. They tore their robes saying, man, don't do this. We're just like you. We're men like you. We, listen, all we are are bond slaves. We're here to preach the gospel to you. So I'm just asking, and, and so far in what I've read, what do we see and what do we have biblical support of having pastoral appreciation, pastoral celebrations on the Lord's Day? Now, this is not to say again that you cannot appreciate or show tangible love to your pastor, but I'm going to give you practical ways on how that should be done biblically. Biblically, if you do it biblically, then there's no reason for a quote unquote pastoral anniversary, pastoral celebration on the Lord's Day. Because you're already you're already celebrating, you're already thanking God for the man of God when he labors in the word and doctrine. You show your love, you show your support by how you take care of the pastor. I'll discuss that in a minute. Um, First Corinthians chapter nine, verse one through 14. And I got to hurry up and get up out of here because I got some things I got to take care of. Here. But I want to just read. This is just on my heart, y'all. So um, this is not to offend, but at the same time, I'm, I'm going to say what I need to be, what needs to be said. First uh, Corinthians chapter nine, verse one, it says, am I not free? This is Paul. He's 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 responding to those who are questioning his apostleship, saying he's a false teacher, saying he's in it for the money. And Paul is now right into the Corinthian church, showing them, hey, listen, if anybody should know me, you should know me. So in verse one. He says, am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If, if, if to others, am I not an apostle? At least I am to you, for you are my seal. You are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My defense to those who examine me is this. Do we not have a right to eat and drink? Do we not have a right to take along a believing wife, even as the rest of the apostles and brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or do, not, or do only Barnabas and I not have a right to refrain from working? Who at any time serves as a soldier at his own expense? Paul is building his case. He's building his case that they, sh they, they should be supporting Paul. They should be financially uh, supporting Paul in his endeavors and in his efforts in preaching the gospel. But notice what he says. He says, who at any time serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat the fruit of it? Or tends a flock and does not use the milk of the flock? He says, I'm speaking these things according to human judgment, am I? He says, I'm not rather speaking these things in, the, in accordance to human judgment, am I? Or does not the law also say these things? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle the ox while it is threshing. In other words, you already know the picture. While the ox is, is, is threshing the ground, he's going to be eating as he's working. He's given the picture to support his point. He says, or is he speaking altogether for... Uh, no, excuse me. He says, for it is written in the law of Moses, should not muzzle the ox while it is threshing. God is not concerned about oxen, is he? Or is he speaking altogether for our sake? Yes, for our sake it was written because the plowman ought to plow in hope and the thresher to thresh in hope of sharing the crops. If we sow spiritual things in you, is it too much if we should reap material things from you? So I hope you hear what Paul is saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we should not uh, financially take care of those who preach and teach the word of God. It is hard work to do that. But what I am against and what I believe scripture is against is these man-made celebrations that go on in the house of God and we want to spiritualize it. And, and for us as black folks, we overdo it. When we, what, what, what some people do in moderation, we do in excess. We, we, we go over the top with it. From, from pastors having their own parking spot to, to having their own seat on the on the on the on the podium or whatever the case might be. Uh, and I'm saying it just draws attention. It, it, it has a, a sense of hierarchy that's, that's not necessary in, in, in God's church. So hear my heart on that. I'm not, I'm not attacking. I'm just making a statement regarding my earlier post this morning and trying to elucidate it by providing exegetical text and letting the scripture say what it says. 
And then the burden of proof has to be on those who basically say, well, you know, there's nothing wrong. We can do it. Okay, so if, if we do it for pastors, then we should be able to do it for parents. We should do it for grandparents. We should do it for pets. We should do it for kids. We should do it for everybody. Let everybody have a day on the Lord's Day. And we just celebrate them. And honor them like we honor the quote-unquote pastor. Well, the pastor is different from people in one way. Other than the fact that he is tasked with preaching and teaching the word of God, where do we find the biblical support? I'm talking about book, chapter, and verse that substantiates such activities going on on the Lord's Day. Keyword, Lord's Day. Um, my wife's birthday is, is uh, on the 22nd and of this month. And it's her birthday, right? I'm pretty sure my wife would not be happy with me if I decided to take her uh, out for her birthday, which I'm going to be doing earlier this week because we know Thanksgiving is on Thursday. And so it's going to be very hard for me to try to, you know, take her out on Wednesday because I know she's going to be going to be cooking and all that good stuff. Um, but how, how, how do you think my wife would feel if I on her day, the day that I recognize my family recognizes the day that the Lord allowed her to come into this earth? And, and she gets dressed up and she gets ready to, to go out and, and I take her out. But I, I don't I don't recognize her. I, I recognize somebody else. The focus and the attention is on someone else. It's not on my wife whose birthday I am. I have set aside, quote unquote, to to give honor, to give appreciation to. Are you all following my point? That's what we do when we have these celebrations on the Lord's Day. We can try to we can try to spiritualize it. We can try to make it seem as if we are doing it as unto the Lord, but it causes confusion. It creates idolatry and pride. And if you're disagreeing with that, then you're not being you're not being honest. Because you know in the black church, this is what goes on and it's planned in advance. You have churches that have these auxiliaries, have the usher board, the deacon board, this board, that board, school board, uh, skateboard, all kind of boards that, that are going to these these leaders in these in these boards and saying, y'all know the pastor's anniversary is coming up. And we know, you know, we we decided we're going to give this amount of money to to the pastor as if the pastor does not already have money. Now, again, I'm not saying I am not saying that we should not tangibly support our pastors, those who labor in the word of doctrine. What I am saying is this stuff that we see going on with these weeks and month long, quote unquote, celebrations that particularly happen on the Lord's Day. Or I'll go further than that. I'll go further than that. When the church gathers, let me just let me just hit it where, where it hurts. When the church gathers, we're to worship God, Period. Period. When, when you and I come together, whether it's on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, if whether, whether, whatever day it is, if we come together as a local body, we are coming together to worship God, not to worship and quote unquote honor man. So let me even expand and broaden that earlier post. And if you have an issue with it, then you're having an issue with the text. Because the early church met daily. <laughs> So we as believers, when we come together, when we come together, we're supposed to be doing what Acts 2.42 says. We're supposed to be devoting ourselves to the apostles' doctrine, to fellowship, to prayer, to breaking the bread. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 April, I'm not messaging you right now. I, I'm not messaging you right now. Uh, so... When the church comes together for worship, okay, we better be having these elements in place because if we are setting aside a time to honor, quote unquote, man, when we're supposed to be honoring God, and I'm not saying we're not to appreciate, you can do that, but setting aside a day and all this other kind of stuff, nah, 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 we don't, we don't see that in the scripture. So Paul says in... In 1 Corinthians 9, 12, he says, If others share the right over you, do we not more? Nevertheless, we did not use this right, but we endure all things that we may cause no hindrance to the gospel of Christ. Do you know or do you not know that those who perform sacred services eat the food of the temple and those who attend regularly 
to the altar, have their share with the altar. Notice, Paul doesn't mention anything about the priests having a special day set aside for them when they were uh, uh, offering and, and receiving uh, sacrifices and, and, and placing uh, sacrifices in the, in, in the temple. You don't see any mention of that. It says, verse 14, so also the Lord directed, this is, this is a command. The Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel. So if pastors are pro proclaiming the gospel, they should be receiving provision from the people of God for preaching the gospel. Is that pretty clear? Whoever's preaching and teaching the gospel, preaching and teaching the word of God in your local church, they should be provided by the local church for the work of preaching and teaching the word of God. It's right there in the text. Can't argue with that. If you're arguing with that, you're arguing with truth. First Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. The text says, Now concerning the collections for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so do you also. On the first day of every week, that's the Lord's day. We know the first day of the week is when the church gathers together. That's Sunday. That's the Lord's day. He says, Let each of you put aside and save as he may prosper, that no collection be made when I come. And this is in the context of taking care of of others in need. He said, when we gather together, our giving should be, it should have, we, we should be proportionate. It should be in, in, in a pattern of giving. We should have that pattern of giving. It should be in proportion and it should be planned. On the first day of the week, you know Sunday morning comes and you have money that God has blessed you with, we should give in proportion to what God has blessed us with. No mention here, no mention in the text of it being pastoral anniversary, pastoral uh, celebration. First Timothy, oh, excuse me, First Thessalonians 5, 12, and 13. He says, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. But we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate, that you appreciate, that you respect those who diligently labor among you, local church, and have charge over you and the Lord and give you instruction and that you esteem them very highly for very highly in the in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. Notice. So we're to we're to appreciate. We're to also remunerate our pastors, those who are elders and teachers that labor in the word of God over us. But to take care of the people of God. There's nothing more worse than you have people that know that your pastor is struggling and they do nothing to take care of the pastor. As if the pastor doesn't have any bills. As if the pastor doesn't have, you know, uh, the same expenses that you have. It's a very sad thing because you have two extremes here. You have one extreme where people go overboard and, and, and give these people in excess of what they've already received. They're not hurting for anything. And then you have pastors who are struggling. Pastors who are trying to make ends meet and the people of that they are that they are ministering and serving to know this, but they don't care. That's the other extreme because oh, well, we, don't, we don't want the pastor to be, you know, to think that, you know, that, you know I want to think this, he should be getting in, in for the money. It shouldn't. That should be no, that, that should not be your concern. Your concern should be if God has placed you placed you in a local fellowship. And that man of God knows what I'm saying. Man of God, not a woman. That man of God has been given to you as a gift by God to labor in the word and doctrine. Your responsibility and obligation is to financially take care of those under shepherds. They have families, they have responsibilities, they have bills. And, and if they are preaching and teaching the word of God, one of the ways you show your love is by taking care of the needs. Notice, not greeds, the needs of your pastors. In any way you can. But to set aside a day and also to kind of say, I just don't see that in, in the text. I don't see that in the word of God. And I think we need to guard ourselves from these, these practices that we have made traditions and have made these traditions truth. Um, so another text in 1 Timothy chapter, chapter 6, uh, verses, um, oh, no, 1 Timothy chapter 5, excuse me. Verse uh, 17, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor. We know what that is? Money. You pay them. You take care of them. Um, and I, I don't think that that's the same thing. A passing anniversary is not different. Than, well, it, well, 
It is because because we don't see that in scripture, you know, Dana. And and, and I think I understand what you're saying, but I, I think we need to be careful with that because as as a pastor and as an under shepherd, we, we, we don't we don't seek to be recognized. It should already come with the responsibility from those who recognize the gift that God has given to them. And it should not be a day that they set aside. And, and, and I asked this question earlier. Who are the ones that are making these decisions for pastors to have these types of celebrations on the Lord's Day or when the church gathers to worship God? Uh, they need to have biblical support for that. Because if, if we have a pastor's anniversary, then we need to have, uh, uh, again, anniversaries for everything. Any idea that somebody brings down the pipe, then might as well do it. Because if not, then that's favoritism. That's favoritism. And we don't think like that. Oh, but that's the pastor. We, we're supposed to appreciate him. We're, we're supposed to appreciate everybody. But at the same time, we are to show our appreciation for those who labor in the word of doctrine. But that doesn't mean that we set aside days for them when the church comes together. That's what I am talking about. And that's what I see that goes beyond what is written. But the Bible says, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle the ox while it is threshing. So you know what Paul does? Paul goes right back to what he had mentioned in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 9. You don't muzzle the ox while it is threshing. You don't starve the worker. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. But godliness actually is a means of great gain when accompanied by contentment, for we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. And if we have food and, clo and clothing and covering, with these we shall be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare, and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money, not money in itself, but the love of money, is a root of all sorts of evil, and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and have pierced themselves with many a pang. Now, again, it is dangerous. And, and I'm, not, I'm not calling any anybody that, that is doing this, you know, pimps, anything like that. It, it, it is a money game for a lot of these preachers. It really is. Um, because to have these things go on, who do you think is getting this money? It, it's, not, it's not those who are uh, less fortunate. And if the pastors are making a six-figure salary or doing well, then, then what's the purpose behind all of this stuff? And, and then if it's not about money, the, the bottom line is it, it, can, it can feed and, and, and fester pride. And we need to guard ourselves um, from that. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. I believe this is the last one I read here. Let your character be free from the love of money, being content with what you have. Again, let your character be free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you, nor I ever will forsake you. So I'll, I'm bringing these things up to ask the question, where do we get this pastor's anniversary, pastor celebration on the Lord's Day and when the church comes together? I don't see that in the word of God. And if we're honest with each other, you don't see that in there, too. But we need to we need to be honest with ourselves and say we, we, we succumb to tradition more than we succumb to the truth. And let's just be honest. Let's just say, you know what? Yeah, you know, I just we've always done it this way. Well, let's just change that. Let's let's do what the Bible says. My brother asked me earlier on my Facebook thread. Uh, uh, how do you how do you you know, is there a way to. To celebrate or, or appreciate a pastor in a Christ honoring way. I just read it, but for the sake of for the sake of reiteration, I'll read it again. So everyone can hear what I'm saying. How do you appreciate your pastor? How do you show appreciation to your pastor in a Christ honoring way? First Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. Four, here's the reason why. The scripture says, you shall not muzzle the ox while he is threshing, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. If you take care of the pastor by making sure that he is financially cared for and financially supported by the best of your ability. You don't need to have 
a quote unquote pastoral anniversary, pastoral celebration. There's no need for it. There's no need for it. Now, it's one thing saying, you know, you know, we praise God for our past. We praise God for the, you know, for the work that he is doing. And we, we, we really thank God uh, for him. And, and, you know, and you give him something, you know, uh, in, in appreciation for that. It's no different than a happy birthday. But when people have happy birthdays, when people have birthdays, do we, do we find churches? Do we see churches setting aside and having all this stuff going for everybody's birthday? So why are we doing it for the pastor? What makes him special? What makes him more special than another person made in the Imago Day? If we're, if we're honest, if we're honest, the tradition that we have have become idolatry. And, and I'm seeing a lot of people bristle when their idols are touched. And, and we just need to be honest with, with ourselves and each other regarding this issue. All right. So. Just wanted to put that out there. Hope you guys heard my heart. I, I, I hope you all heard my heart. I'm not here to attack anyone. You know, this is why I, I post videos and, and, and do these things because I, I would rather you hear the tone of my words verbally than trying to interpret it via uh, via text. So uh, I think I'm very, I've been, I've made myself very clear with this. I, I don't think there's nothing that I said that can be misconstrued or misinterpreted or even misrepresented. Um, but I just believe that there's nothing in Scripture that supports this. When we come together on the Lord's Day or when we come together as a church to worship God, that we should have a, a set aside time or day to appreciate and celebrate pastors. And I for pastors speak on that same level as well. So if you have any questions, you feel, feel, feel free to inbox me on my Facebook page or you can email me. Seiko Woods, S-A-I-K-O Woods with an S at Yahoo.com. And... Uh, like to have a conversation on the phone, just email me your number and we'll set up a time to talk. But I just want to encourage the body of Christ and, and to and to exhort us that we need to guard ourselves uh, from idols. We need to guard ourselves from idols. And a pastor could be made an idol too. Not just a piece of wood or stone that we think is, is an idol only. Anything that we elevate or eclipse uh, before God can be an idol. So, Hope you heard my heart. Um, and that's pretty much all I wanted to say. So uh, God bless you all. I love y'all. Y'all know the drill. Whatever you do, do all to the glory and honor of God. God bless.